We looked at top-down and side-scrolling movement. Now it's time to talk about the isometric projection. We're going to see how to convert coordinates from the Cartesian system to the isometric one. And I'll show you how to write a simple function in Godot to achieve that. Here's a quick visual comparison of the two. So you know the Cartesian system on the right. This is the basic axes we use in the game. The X is positive going to the right and the Y axis is positive going down. The isometric projection is mostly used for industrial drawings, for engineers to provide sketches for a product or some architecture design. The idea is that we rotate the x-axis by 30 degrees and the y-axis by 60 degrees clockwise. It's a projection, so the idea is that we rotated the camera on two axes and we project the 3D shapes it sees on a 2D plane. In games, we don't really use those angles. Instead, we use a simple ratio that facilitates the creation of game assets, but also the calculations in the game. So we don't care about the angle of the axes. Instead, we tend to make the tiles twice as large as they are high and turn them into rhomboids. As far as the art is concerned, to produce the rhombus on the right from the square on the left, rotate the square by 45 degrees clockwise, then you squash its height, you divide it by two, you still have to scale it to give both figures the same size, but that's the idea. Now as far as the mapping is concerned, if you take a grid like we designed in the previous tutorials, the top side of the grid ends on the top right side of the isometric grid. The x-axis of the isometric grid is the one numbered in red and the y-axis is numbered in green. When we store our grid in an array, that is how you map the array to the world. As far as the player is concerned, here's a simple diagram for you to see how movement in the top-down world is mapped to the isometric one. When we move on the grid to the right, the character will move to the right and a bit to the bottom on the isometric map. If we move to the top, it will move to the right and a bit to the top as well. In other words, when the player wants to move in one direction, to the right, the top, the bottom or the left, the character will move both on the X and Y axes on the screen. Let's talk about the calculations. You can already see why we use that 2 to 1 ratio. It makes it so with two square tiles of equal size, we can cover the isometric tile entirely. To convert the Cartesian to isometric coordinates, we have to look how much moving on one isometric axis contributes to the Cartesian position or the screen position. If we move one unit to the right on the isometric x-axis, we move by one unit to the right on the X and 0 0.5 units down in the Cartesian system. Similarly, when we move down on the Y axis, we move one unit to the left on the X axis, so minus one unit, and we move 0.5 unit down on the Y axis. In other words, when we move one unit either on the X or Y axis, we add or subtract half the motion on the Y axis. I have a basic top-down movement example where if I press one of the arrow keys, the character moves in the corresponding direction, but it doesn't follow the isometric grid. When we press one of the arrow keys, we want the character to move diagonally like we've seen on the diagrams before. To do that, we'll use a function to convert Cartesian values to isometric ones. It takes a vector 2, a Cartesian position or a motion vector and it returns the isometric version of that. Really take your time to wrap your head around what's going to follow. When we move in one direction, we want this to affect both coordinates on the screen. So let's write that. We'll have the screen pose X and Y. When we move one isometric unit to the right, we're going to move 
one unit to the right on the screen and half a unit down. So let's write that. We'll take the Cartesian coordinate and add it to the X screen position. And then we'll also add half of it to the screen Y position. Then when we move down, if you remember, we move one unit to the left on the screen. So we have to subtract the Cartesian Y position. And when we move one isometric unit up, we're going to move one unit to the right on the screen. That's why we subtract the Cartesian Y value. Then when we move one isometric unit down, we also contribute half of it to the screen Y position. So we have to add the Cartesian Y divided by two. We divide both the X and the Y by two and we add them. So we can use parentheses to group the operation. And that is it. You have your conversion. Now we can grab this function and apply it to the character's motion to convert it from the regular screen movement we've seen to the isometric motion. Now if I test the game, you can see how the character is following the isometric grid. Now we can simplify the function a little bit and directly return the result. But we can return a vector 2 directly and we'll fill in this part for the x coordinate and that part for the y. In one line, it works exactly the same. The character will still follow the isometric grid. With a little bit of algebra, you can convert the other way around from isometric to the game world. It's rarely useful in a game, but I've included it in the example. It's a nice exercise to do. And I can show you on the motion, I'm going to convert to the isometric screen position and back to the Cartesian world, which will give us our initial game behavior. Now again, the character doesn't follow the grid. He can move in eight directions, but when I press a single arrow key, he moves along the screen axes. I've included the slides in the video description, so you can have a reference. With the same function, you can make the grid example from the pastorial's work on an isometric grid. Uh, you'll have to use Godot's isometric projection on the tile map. You have a setting for that. And the map to world and world to map methods on the tile map will take the isometric projection in account.